Good morning, everybody. Welcome to day three. I think I've got some of the numbers wrong the past couple days, um, but welcome to day three of Adobe XD's daily challenge. I'm Mark Ryzen. I'm a local designer here based in San Francisco, and I'll be hosting you for the next 25, 30 minutes going over today's daily challenge. Um, for those of you that are new, uh, the daily XD challenge is basically an opportunity to um, sign up and get an email prompt every day from Adobe where we're going to prompt you with certain themes each day that give you exposure to mobile apps, iPad apps, web pages, um, you name it. And then each day we'll be working together to try to create some type of UI or UX or design interface based off of some of those themes. Um, so it's a great opportunity to get engaged with the community. We have a lot of different ways to kind of support through feedback and constructive uh, feedback through Slack channels, um, also just making your work available on Behance allows all kinds of great visibility. Um, so I'll go over a couple of particulars just for people that are just joining us. Um, right now you can actually register for the daily challenge on the uh, XD Creative Challenge landing page. The most important thing, other than kind of getting some of the specifics and some of the rules, are to enter your name and enter your e email and then click Get Started. There's a little video tutorial that just talks a little bit about the prompt and covers some of the things that I discussed. Once you do that, you're going to receive an email in your inbox that looks something like this. So every day you come in just about this time and you'll see the email and it'll cover what our theme is, it'll cover a couple of the particulars and um, then it also gives you a link into the Slack channel. So in the Slack channel, uh, which maybe we can pull up on the screen just over my head, uh, the Slack channel is basically a way for you to submit your work as we go through the exercise uh, each day. It's a good way to provide feedback. Uh, there's a lot of people in there. There's a lot of people sharing their ideas. There's a lot of people talking about their work. Um, and then we have a team of people who are designers and representatives from Adobe that are also helping provide professional feedback. Um, so. It's a really, really great opportunity just to share your work and uh, get some feedback. So make sure to check out the Slack channel. We'll all be there waiting eagerly. Um, so what else? This is just a couple examples that are coming into the Slack channel. So you can just see the activity in the room. Uh, you can see how people are sharing compositions, links out to their Behance portfolio and projects. Um, so make sure to check it out. When you do submit your work uh, to Behance, everything is now kind of getting organized into this, um, this tag based off of the XD Daily Challenge. And so, as you can see, we started about three days ago. These are all the submissions that we've uh, started to receive. And it's, uh, it's, it's kind of incredible just to see the amount of work that people are able to complete within a day or within a few hours timed. Um, and there's a lot of variety here. There's really, really diverse solutions. There's different approaches. There's all types of uh, forms of inspiration here. Um, so this is a great resource just to provide visibility in your work and also for us to feature it. So right now I'm gonna take a little bit of time and just look through some of the submissions and uh, provide some feedback. I wanted to address a couple questions that came into the community. Um, Simon asked, for me in particular, how I kind of prepare for this show or what are some of the things that I do? Uh, Simon, it really varies. Um, I don't. I haven't done any sketches for any of these, or I haven't, um, you know, kind of thought about a actually designing the things prior to coming in. Um, I do try to take some of the inspiration or some of the examples of work that I see when I'm when I'm looking at other products that are taking similar approaches, like Fandango was used yesterday, and so that helps me kind of think about what are the constraints, what are the things that I need to, you know, to complete within this flow. And then I try to apply some type of design sensibilities. Um, the movie one was definitely one of the harder or more challenging ones just because it was a flow. Um, and so for me, it was really important to kind of think that out ahead of time of what are the main things that I need to be covering, uh, kind of like a full bleed images, uh, large detail poster views, um, content, actor support, and then trying to get into some of the purchases. So um, Maybe next week I can try to think about doing some thumbnails and kind of come in with some of those and I'll be able to share those with you guys. But really great question. Um, also, big shout out to Gary over at Design Course. Gary has also been uh, taking part with us on the XD Challenge. Uh, he did a live stream after we um, finished our live stream yesterday. And so if you want more opportunities uh, or if you yourself want to take part in the XD Challenge in this way, Gary's doing a really, really great job. Um, and doing live sessions and just sharing about his work. So thanks so much, and it's awesome to see this happening in the uh, community. 
So we'll go over a couple examples. Um, as I mentioned, part of participating in this means that there's an opportunity for us to provide critique and talk about your work. Um, so this one's from, uh, I think, Keen? Kane? Not sure how to say that. Um, and Kane worked with the, uh, she, it looks like she worked on the movie Ticket Purchasing with us. Um, so overall, really nice composition. Um, I love the, the large format photo on the device to the left. Um, it's a really nice composition of walking us through a little bit of her process. Uh, nice, really use of the, the photographs that come in. You know, this is something that we talked about, but being able to focus on the content and pull the, the artwork or the creative work that comes out of these movies forward. Uh, so really nice focus on that. We've got a nice pro primary call to action here, which is just, hey, this is the movie I want. Get me to my ticket as quickly as possible. Really good use of showing the, the opportunities or the um, available dates or times for the movie. Um, it's a really nice use of showing a selected state here and deactivated states. Also, uh, really nice additional detail here, which I, I can appreciate and something that I didn't get into um, in my segment. But, you know, identifying the cinema or identifying the destination of where this is going to be is obviously uh, a key part in kind of how you pick your ticket. So big kudos there. Um, also, another nice addition and something I didn't get the opportunity to get into, which is the seat selection. Um, so, you know, seeing this work is a good way to uh, help me think and help grow my work as well and think about what are the things that I forgot, what are the things that I can apply, and that's one of the great things about sharing this in a community. So really nice work. Next we've got Ori. Uh, Ori was active in the uh, Slack community with us yesterday, he was sharing his ideas, uh, kind of went through a whole flow and flurry of uh, user flows, so it's really great just to see how the work progressed through feedback. Um, focused on Deadpool 2 with us. So uh, just from a, an overall view, a nice big bold image at the top of the project showing um, kind of the primary use cases as well as putting it in a nice composition. The ticket screen is a really, really nice touch. Uh, the RFID or the, um, what are those things called? The barcode or, unic what is it? QR the QR code, yeah, sorry, the QR code um, scanner. Is really nice touch. Also, the additional uh, visualization of the ticket I think adds a really nice feel to the to the theme of uh, the design here. So I love seeing the Deadpool in here. Oh, cool! Picked picked the splash screen, which is something that we covered really early on in the challenge. Um, good use and implementation of the seat selection. I like actually the fact that we're still bringing in the uh, cinema display, maybe that implies that's the location where the theater screen is going to be, which is a really nice touch. Awesome. Boom, appreciate it. Let's see, I think I saw this one also yesterday in the Slack channel. Uh, awesome composition, three primary screens, nice big full bleed image front and center. Um, this looks uh, a lot like a really nice interpretation, or uh, actually, you probably evolved it better in a direction than I did, um, but really nice use of how to kind of select the number of seats. So I love the action sheet that's coming up from the bottom of the screen, um, specifically while over the seat chart. Also, um, nice, nice little um, iteration here. So using kind of the iPhone as a way to frame the content, but not having it be a high resolution or high fidelity iPhone is a way to actually bring more focus into your work. Um, so there's several ways you can obviously show your work on a device, and this is just one of many, but it's really nice just to see that you're not focusing on a high fidelity design, you wanna bring the focus into the actual screens. So that's a nice touch. It also works thematically with the color and the palette that you've used. So it's a really nice harmonious project. Boom, appreciate it. This one we've got from G. Magosta. G was also active in the Slack channel yesterday. I think she hinted that, yeah, so Missoula. Um, I think I asked a question if uh, she was actually from Montana. Um, so we're starting out with a login screen. So we've got pick ticks, movie selection, really nice use of carousel, obviously going for a different look in, in density. Um, so showing more movie options rather than kind of focusing on one primary image. Um, so that's a great iteration. Really nice job. 
and then kind of alternating the format into a hor horizontal viewing, um, which is probably how you're going to view the trailer on your device. Um, also, great additional detail, picking out some of the list, the listings of the other theaters that are in the area, um, something I just did not have time to think about. We've got a fly-out panel or kind of a, a panel that comes out from the side. Um, you know, just uh, showing these types of affordances or, or um, I guess, ways of implementing design in mobile, um, you know, it's really great to see and explore different opportunities. Uh, sometimes I think that really adhering to some of the affordances or guidelines that are demonstrated on the devices helps really inform users of the experience. So uh, it's great to explore these alternate takes on how to uh, introduce UI. Um, sometimes it's also good to refer to how the platforms use them today. So this, this pattern in, in specifics, uh, the way that it comes over from the, the left-hand side might be a little bit odd or a new experience to the customer. So you could also approach this from an action sheet where it's coming up from the bottom, which is something that we covered in some of our approaches, or do like a full screen view. Really nice job. Oh. We already appreciated that. And then our last is from Jason. So Jason's also doing a, an example of Deadpool 2, two which is great. It looks like we've got a, um, a nice carousel of images up at the top that's featuring all the movie posters, um, primary call to action for playing the trailer front and center, um, listing movie times, cast, so kind of doing a filtered or a tab view of how to maybe get into more d deeper, detailed information into the view there. Um, going into ticket purchases. So really nice, really nice job, job, Jason. I love the use of the full bleed image in the background. Um, you're, we're running into a couple accessibility issues here um, where maybe this text is a little bit harder to read on the background. Some ways that you can solve that are ways that you've actually utilized another screen. So putting a color block or putting some use of color in the background to help create the highest contrast for the text leads to some of the best um, accessibility or legibility for customers and users. So uh, you know, for the next challenge or for today's challenge or the next one that we, that we do next week, just something to consider as you think about how people can read the context on the devices. We appreciate you. Thank you so much. Uh, so as I mentioned, today's challenge is focused on a weather app. Just to do a quick recap, this week so far, uh, day zero or the introduction day, we focused on the splash screens. Um, I use that as an opportunity to do a splash screen for one of our products that's not actually on mobile currently, uh, which is Bitbucket. Um, so was able to organize a splash screen very, fairly, fairly shortly uh, within about five minutes. Day one, we started out with an activity tracker. We decided to have a little bit of fun and think a little bit outside of the box. Um, so this uh, was for an activity tracker if you're living on Mars. Um, so trying to think about you know, maybe the distance covered, how many skips, potential air time, all these things are things to consider um, in a different gravity. So uh, this was actually a lot of fun. It was also a really cool opportunity to use a Mars landscape, which is probably something we don't see on devices very often. And then yesterday, this was what I was able to get through. Um, I'm going to try to full screen this for everybody. Yesterday, just for the movie ticket purchase, um, this is what I was able to get through within, a, within the 10 minutes that we had. Um, so thinking about how to quickly and discover and explore genres of movies, um, providing a carousel to allow you to swipe and discover um, more movie titles. This swipe affordance is something that we use thematically throughout the rest of the um, product experience. So going into a nice larger format image, um, a play button to watch the trailer, select movie times, descriptions, actors, and then this is where um, I would probably come in and spend a little bit more time and start polishing out some of the experiences um, and some of the things that I've learned looking at everybody else's work. So, this is going to let me get out of here. Okay. So, today we're going to be focusing on a weather app. Um, I also wanted to spend a little bit of time talking to you about some of the considerations when, de when designing for smart, small devices. 
Um, there are different constraints that apply when designing for a watch. Um, and there's definitely some tips and tricks that I want to help provide um, so that everyone can kind of think about this as they're designing their project. We're going to be using a um, UI kit for this session. So we're going to come into File, Get UI Kits, and More UI Kits. <clears throat> and here, Adobe and Community have been able to provide a plethora <laughs> of screens, solutions, beautiful designs. Um, all within a click's reach for everybody. So this is the kit that we're going to use. I've already downloaded it. Um, you just click the link here. It'll start downloading. Um, and then you can open it up in XD. I have this floating in the background. Um, the reason I'm going to use this UI kit and start here is, um, one, I just wanted to start it. I wanted to show or demonstrate a different flow or process th through work. Um, and two, I wanted to utilize a lot of the components that are already provided in these designs. Um, so that we don't have to spend time thinking about or designing those components. So um, as we refer back to this, I'll probably start picking out a few menu items and a few of the system level thinking so that we can pull that into our own design for the uh, weather app. So let's see, um, some screens that we can probably think about using for a flow. I think a notification screen it's probably a good prompt to kind of get into the, the experience. This is a, I think this is an example from Dark Sky. So to, to kind of further Simon's original question about how I start, um, you know, by having another project or another product design next to my work, this really helps to inspire me and think about what, what am I forgetting? What are the things that I'm surprised by that I'm seeing in this project? And it helps me serve as a reminder into the work that I'm doing um, to say, OK, well, if they considered this, maybe this is something that I need to be considering also. Or if this is, isn't a focus of my product, maybe this is something I'm going to omit. And so having this kind of next to the content is a good way to think about um, how I can push my design further, but also how I can evolve my own design. Um, so a few things for designing for smart smartwatches and, and small devices. Um, you know, this is a very, very tight format. The bezel on the watch has a very, very large padding. So as you're working through this, think about how tight everything can get to the edge of the screen. Real estate is uh, something to heavily consider. Text and legibility is something he heavily to consider when designing for smartwatches. Um, there's a lot of pieces that are provided on a systems level from Apple, like this notification and the call to actions and the buttons. Um, the reason you're using a dark screen the majority of the time is actually because it helps conserve battery, battery uh, space or um, help the battery last longer. If you were to turn the entire screen white and you were to do a white interface on the watch, um, one, you would create a really high contrast edge on the edge of the bezel, which is OK for some instances. Um, but it also drains your battery because you're using more, I guess, power to kind of power up your whole screen. So try to keep the screens dark. Um, try to think about high contrast legible text in the form of white or nice hot spot colors. And use the existing UI that's provided. Um, I did start thinking about um, some icons and some things that maybe we could bring into this product. And so I've got a list of those over here that I've added to my library. I think they're provided from the authentic weather app, but I'm not sure. Um, so I'm going to start iterating on this and probably use the existing color palette that's provided right now. Let's see if we can. Let's see. scale this and maybe this will be an icon for the app that we can put front and center. We can relabel this weather. Um, and so thinking about how to how, you know how to make a weather app useful on the phone, maybe you get a notification in the morning when you start your day and it says, hey, I think actually the weather right now in San Francisco is a little overcast and rainy. Um, so maybe we can put a nice uh, microcopy um, or a nice 
form of text in here that is a good way to engage the customer and say, hey, you know what? It looks like it's a little foggy. It looks like it's going to rain. Maybe grab a jacket. Um, going rain. And so maybe within that, we can say thanks. Maybe there can be a prompt here that, other than saying thanks, um, maybe we can also say uh, view, I guess, view the week. Uh, what would it be? View, I guess, view forecast, maybe. So let's see if we can increase this a little bit. So this can kind of be a way to say, OK, it's raining right now, but what's going to be the rest of the forecast throughout the day? And so maybe if we go into the forecast, um, we'll take this. Let's go back over to our UI kit and grab a title header. Maybe something here. We'll rename this. Weather. We'll make that our blue. And so we said, looks like it's going to rain. Maybe grab a jacket. Or maybe we can say, maybe grab a umbrella. So let's go through some of these icons, see if we can't find something that looks a little rainy. Maybe they'll just be light showers. Oh, no. So again, thinking about the real estate and thinking about how close padding and things need to be on the device, um, we're going to put this fairly close to the edge. Um, we can place it there for now. And uh, I don't know the current temperature, but let's just say it's somewhere around uh, 60 degrees. So it's a little bit chilly. Maybe we'll do 55. And so I'm using a large, bold font here because I think this is probably going to be um, something that's really important for someone to register or see when they're coming into the weather app experience. Uh, in regards to other information that's probably going to be important here, um, maybe the day. So in this case, it's Friday. Again, considering our padding. And let's see, we'll probably put this in. Maybe we can say, um, styles we have here. And then we can put that in our spot color. So I'm using a monochromatic take here. Um, I'm trying to keep it simple. I'm trying to think about you know how I can keep these in a family of colors right now. Um, I think that there's a lot of other explorations that we can do as we explore these designs. Um, right now what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to think of one, how can we prompt the customer or person to say, hey, look, here's what the weather looks like. Here's something you should consider. Then going into a more forecast or detail view for the day, um, then they're able to kind of see, okay, I can see that it's gonna rain. There's a possible chance of maybe sunshine coming in. Uh, it's gonna be 55 degrees. I now see that today's Friday. And then there's kind of that other affirmation in plain text. So just in case the symbol or the icon isn't enough, um, then maybe we can say something from the language that we use in the notification, like looks like look like it's going to rain. 
we can do a quick iteration on this. Um, and so maybe we can use our big uh, bold kind of text here to looks like rain. So this is kind of a different way to think about how to prioritize the information and for a, uh, a user to think about viewing that information. Scale it. And we can show kind of a different way to prioritize the information. We can bring Friday over here. Center line. Maybe we still want to put in our fifty five degrees here. We can bump this up a little bit. Let's use our thirty four. And so just a different way to think about the interface. Um, so the main flow right now is for the weather app. As you come in, you get a notification that kind of lets you know what the information is or what the weather is going to be like that day. Um, you can click the view forecast. We could probably go deeper into here. We could probably go into a weekly forecast. We could probably go into a little bit more information. Um, there's a lot of available charts and graphs that I think we could use to help um, get there by helping display kind of the flow of the week or how the weather is maybe going to change periodically. So make sure to check out this UI kit and see if that helps kind of push your work along. Real quick, I'm going to show how to um, upload this to Behance. So we'll take the selected screens and then we will export selected. And then I will create a new folder, which will be weather app, create, export. And then what we can do is we can come over to Behance. We'll take our uh, project that we currently have up. And then by adding the same work to our existing project that we've been going, um, going through for the last three days, I'll come over here to upload files. We've got our weather app files. So I'll upload the three smartwatch files. In case this is your first time uh, contributing or working with us, make sure to label that field UI and UX. Also for discoverability, add a tag that says XD Daily Challenge. This is a good way for you to show up on the, on the board that we have everybody's work that's kind of currently aggregating there. So it's a good way to provide visibility into your work. Also make sure to follow up with us in the Slack channel. Um, after this session or throughout the day, share your work, let us provide feedback. Um, also, others are providing feedback, which is great. We're starting to see the community contribute in there. So make sure to save it as XD Challenge. Click Save. And then that's it. Uh, so hopefully this was really helpful. Hopefully it was some good insights actually into thinking about some of the constraints within designing for smaller devices, specifically smartwatches. Uh, there's definitely a lot to consider. Uh, we'll be continuing this XD challenge into next week, so make sure to follow us along. We'll start off Monday, 9 a.m., so make sure to stick around. We look forward to seeing your submissions. Everybody have an awesome weekend. Uh, this has been a lot of fun. It's been a huge challenge for me, um, but I'm, I'm enjoying every single minute of it. So thanks so much for joining in, and looking forward to seeing you guys in the community. Take care.